Will Fuller is another veteran receiver who has been linked to the Ravens as a possible free agent signing, and it's an interesting case. Me, personally, I've always been a fan of Will Fuller. Now, I did a horrible job of creating a thumbnail uh, Photoshop pic here of Will Fuller. I'm quite ashamed of it. But uh, he's a very talented guy, ex-receiver, wins one-on-one -on -one matchups, has a patented move that he utilizes against press man often. Deep ball threat, if you ask me, only 28 years old, huge injury history, and I believe he's been suspended for PEDs twice, including a one-game suspension in week one last year in 2021. You can see from a quick perusal of his stats here, he's only 28 years old. He'll be going to his third team. Miami signed him last year to a one-year deal worth $10 million. I believe like $9.6 million was a signing bonus, and, and they didn't get much out of him at all. I'm not sure what he commands or demands in the free agent wide receiver market to be honest with you it's not like there's a, a lot of high level guys out there at this point in time and I thought the draft was pretty good for, rec for receivers contrary to what a lot of other people thought uh, Will Fuller however is a big play guy and if you look at some of these seasons he's he's scoring a touchdown every 10 targets or less for example 2017 seven touchdowns on 50 targets 2020, the last time he was seen regularly, eight touchdowns on 75 targets. But look at the games played, significantly less games played. You would have to suspect that if he does sign with the Ravens or any other high-level team, it's going to be for approximately one-fifth the amount of money that he signed for in 2021. I can't see anyone committing more than 2.5 or maybe $3 million toward him, given how unavailable he has been for certain periods of time. Again, I mentioned two PED violations. Now, in case you're like, why are we even talking about this guy? Let me remind you who we f Will Fuller is in, in case you were not watching football in 2017. Will Fuller had a stretch of, of four games in 2017 where he scored seven touchdowns, uh, most of it against some pretty high-level competition. He's beat, In this video I'll show you today, he beats uh, Richard Sherman twice. He beats Malcolm Butler, of course, in 2020. I believe Butler sat out last year, and now he's re-signed with the Patriots, reunited with Belichick. Look, Fuller is only six foot one, I believe, but he wins one-on-one -on -one matchups. He wins fades. He wins outbreaking routes. He wins vertical routes. He's a big play guy. It's very tantalizing when you see someone with this kind of talent. Now, granted, this is five-year-old film, but Will Fuller is only 28. Someone is going to take a chance on him. He's going to score touchdowns again in the NFL. Unfortunately, given his track record, he's only going to play 8 or 10 or 11 games and probably give you 6 or 7 touchdowns. Look, that was a special run, scoring 7 touchdowns in a four-week stretch. You know, there's, there's certain NFL players who have done that. Their names are mostly probably all pro guys. Will Fuller is certainly not one of them. A little underrated because he played with DeAndre Hopkins, played with Deshaun Watson, eventually signed with the Dolphins, and, and that signing clearly did not work out. As you'll see from this play, if you if you press up on him, you're playing a dangerous game. Will Fuller, probably at age 28, can still beat certain NFL DBs like this. Now, where you're going to have him deployed in terms of the hierarchy of your receiver position, probably the number two or number three receiver. On the Baltimore Ravens, he would clearly be the number two or number three behind Mark Andrews and, and Rashad Bateman. Now, look, maybe there's going to be a philosophical change at some point in the NFL like there is in the NBA. Maybe they're going to load manage certain guys, and I don't know how this will work out. I mean, certainly if the NFL tries to extend the season any further, guys like Will Fuller just won't have any place, no matter how impactful or impressive they can be in the stretches when they're healthy. Anything longer than a 17-game season is just going to destroy guys' availability because the recovery time in the offseason is necessary. Look, this is him beating uh, middle-of-the-field safety coverage by Earl Thomas quite easily. You cannot underestimate his speed once he gets moving downhill. And, and there's a lot of film of Will Fuller making plays in the red zone. Here's one. Seattle's going to be playing their patented cover three. That's Richard Sherman he's lined up against. Richard Sherman's doing one of their patented press bail techniques that, that the Seahawks corners like to do. And this is one of the things Will Fuller does well. He takes people in and then brings it back out. Now, he hesitates there. He thought the play was over. And, and he ends up making a jumping catch in the end zone. He's a playmaker. He is. I, I fully believe if a team signs Will Fuller next year, he will be able to do stuff like this and generate six or seven touchdowns. But it's just based on his availability. There is certainly talent there, and when you're talking about someone who can beat a guy like Richard Sherman and Malcolm Butler, 
multiple times, especially when those guys were in their heyday. It, it's intriguing or interesting from a talent standpoint, depending on the salary that those guys are willing to accept. That's a pretty clear amount of separation that Will Fuller has created there down when the ball was snapped on the 20-yard line. Of course, it looks like he got hurt by Sherman's collision right there. It's difficult to make a case for a guy like Will Fuller, given that there's no film from 2021 to really evaluate. I think he had four catches in three games played for the Miami Dolphins. So let's look at two of the best games that he had in 2020 while still playing for the Texans. This first set of clips is against the Tennessee Titans. Of course, the Titans went 11-5 in 2020, lost in the divisional round home playoff game to the Ravens. And, and he makes a series of plays here against the Titans that illustrate what he's able to do. This first one, I believe, he's going to go over the middle. The throw's going to be a little bit high. One thing I haven't seen Fuller do um, is make a ton of catches over the middle. And I'm not sure if that's just because of the limited sample size of my film study here. To be honest with you, I wanted to get three film studies out by Wednesday. Julio Jones, Will Fuller, and Jarvis Landry, a lot of people have mentioned them as possible targets. Look, you can see the acceleration that Will Fuller has once he gets the football in his hands, or like I showed you from 2017, how he is when he gets off vertical. Here he is against Malcolm Butler to the boundary side. This is, again, his patented route where he takes you in and then breaks it back towards the sideline. And you can see against a quality DB, he's able to create space. Another thing you notice is Malcolm Butler lines up against him in off coverage. So, so let's talk about this from a Ravens standpoint. I've spoke to you before that most teams play quarters or cover three against the Ravens. Will Fuller seems to be effective against any coverage he gets. He's a veteran. He's played a lot, even though he's only 28 years old and, and missed parts of seasons. He came into the NFL young. And a key point here, if you ask me, that's underrated that won't go mentioned with Will Fuller is – He's played with Deshaun Watson, so he knows about extending plays, if you ask me. One thing I did not see in any film or any game I watched of him is him give up on a ball. He's always trying to make the catch, even if he puts himself at risk. Now, with his injury history, you would probably suggest to him, hey, maybe it's a good idea to not try to go get this ball with a safety recovery. But, but I don't think that's the mindset that Will Fuller has. He's a playmaker. He knows he's made plays in the NFL against high-level competition. Here's a play. They're, they're behind in 2020 against the Titans. Tennessee's going to play a cover two, if you ask me. Malcolm Butler, who's lined up at corner, eventually shifts to half field safety. And Will Fuller finds the open spot in the zone, running up the left sideline. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this is Malcolm Butler's fault. He's the guy I had spot shadow. My point to, to spot shadow him and point him out is that Will Fuller has made plays against high level players. And, and that's just not something that the Ravens have on the roster right now in terms of any other young receivers, other than Devin DuVernay taking Patrick Sertain Jr. to school last year in week four. The other really effective game he had in 2020 was against the Lions. Of course, we know the Lions haven't been real good, but the reason I show this to you is the Lions are going to be in, in press, for, press man or some variation of it in pretty much every snap here except for one. Will Fuller beat them for two touchdowns and had a third one called back. Will Fuller took a lot of these young DBs to school. He's seen a lot of these coverages before. He knows how to use slight variations and speed changes in order to get open. This DB jumps to the inside, some type of shoulder fake or something, makes him think that he's got to turn his back to the sideline, and Will Fuller gets an easy pass interference penalty here. And look, look he, there's a possibility, I don't know if it's a 10% possibility, 20%, whatever, that Will Fuller signs with an NFL team, stays healthy, and is able to score 8, 10, 12 touchdowns next season. He has that kind of ability. The problem for Will Fuller is there are other guys in the NFL who can, who can make these plays. There's other guys who have this kind of big play ability. But Will Fuller seems to make plays in bunches. He seems to be like a home run hitter, if you ask me. Here's another play that Deshaun Watson extended, and surprise, surprise, Will Fuller took his route to the inside, to the hash, and then brought it back to the corner once he saw Watson escape in the pocket. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have always been a fan of Will Fuller. I, I enjoyed watching him play for the Texans, particularly when he was paired with DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins got so much attention, and I thought there were moments where Will Fuller just looked like a spectacular football player. Here's the only example in this clip here against the Lions of them playing off coverage on him. Otherwise, they're trying to play press man, and they consistently are getting beat. What do you think he's going to do here? He's got press man. He's in the slot. He's going to take him into the 
towards the hash and then bring it back towards the sideline. Kind of like a smash concept, except it's not smashed or playing man, so you're, there's nobody to read in terms of a deep third defender. You guys let me know what you think. To be honest with you, one of the sayings that I have continued to adopt as I've become an older person is it's not that simple. Most issues are, are not that simple. There's there's multiple sides and angles that you can look at things, and I feel like that makes you a more complete person, m gives you more depth. And, and I want to say that it's not so simple with Will Fuller. Now, maybe I'm saying that because I've always been a fan of his, and I've always appreciated the, the playmaking ability that he has, particularly downfield. There are multiple 30, 40, and 50-yard touchdown catches uh, that I did not show in this video just for the purposes of brevity. I wonder if there's, there's not some kind of plan by the Ravens or other teams to look at guys like Will Fuller and then pair them with younger players who, who would you know maybe not be active every week but could, could move into that role if Will Fuller steps out or is injured or, God forbid, gets caught for PEDs one more time. Now, one comment I will make, and I kind of alluded to it earlier on, is I hate the 17-game schedule. I do, because I think what it does is it just adds another percent percentage of the games that a player like Will Fuller or even Julio Jones, who I released a video earlier tonight on, an, another game that they could miss. How many more games are we going to add? Are we going to get to where it's a 20-game regular season? At, at what point is it too many regular season games? And I understand what the NFL wants. They want more, more money. They want another game in their regular season. But if you ask me what they're doing eventually at some point is they're risking long-term injury in terms of season-ending injuries to good players who would then miss the playoffs. And at some point, I think that discussion point with the long-term health of all players in mind, not just guys like Will Fuller. You guys, let me know what you think of my film study in the comment section and what you think of the possibility of the Ravens or any other NFL team signing a guy like Will Fuller.